All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how you can run a .NET Core application in a Docker container in two steps. The first step is to install Docker on Windows, and the second step is to create and run the application. So starting first by installing Docker on Windows, head first to the official website where you can download Docker CE, where CE stands for Community Edition. Once downloaded, simply follow the wizard and click next through the steps as the defaults are enough. Once installed, you should be able to check that Docker is running properly by looking at the bottom right notification bar of Windows, which should have the Docker icon. Click on the Docker icon and then click on settings and you should see the message saying that Docker is running fine. If this worked, you have a running version of Docker Windows. But if it did not work, the first thing you have to check is whether Hypervision is enabled on your machine. You can check that by looking at Windows features. Now if it's not enabled and you try to enable it, and Windows prompts you that virtualization is not enabled, you will need to enable it from the BIOS. Once installed, we can head over to PowerShell and run our first container with Docker Run Hello World. Where Docker is the CLI, Run stands for running a container, and Hello World is the image that we used to run the container. Just like Docker Run, there are commands that we encounter very often, like Docker Build to build images, Docker Image LS to list the images that we have, Docker Image RM to remove images, Docker Container LS to list your containers, Docker Container RM to remove containers, and there are many more commands. But what is important here to remember is that we build images and we run containers. An image is static, it is built once and is immutable like a snapshot, while a container is a living instance. So knowing that, we can imagine what commands we can expect. Since a container is a living instance, we can think of having start, stop, remove, or checking the logs that are currently being logged, or getting an interactive session on the container. And for an image, since it's a static snapshot, we can expect to build it or remove it. So this is how we can think about to be able to remember the commands that are available on the Docker CLI. Now moving on to the second part, we start by creating a C Sharp ASP.NET Core application and make sure to select add docker support with a Linux OS and when we click OK we get the project auto-generated and the docker support gives us two extra things auto-generated. One is the docker file in the project and two is the launch settings. So the docker file is the file that allows us to build the image which will contain our own application. So I won't go into the details of the docker file but looking at it very briefly we can see that we are copying the file necessary to build the application and publishing the application within the image and at the end using .NET to run the application as an entry point. The launch settings auto-generated allows us to run the application just by clicking on the run button on Visual Studio. This binds the debugger on the background and allows us to breakpoint in the application while running on Docker. Now when we run, we can use the commands that we saw in the first part, docker container ls, docker image ls, and we should see the image and the container generated by our application. And that's it. That's how you run an ASP.NET Core application in a Docker container. Hope you like this video. See you on the next one.